McNeil, six points. McNeil splitting. Charlie Waters, 41, and Mel Renfro, Tarkenton, drilling it on target. Well, hello. Thank you so much for taking time out of your day to check out this video. And welcome to the Gridiron. Before I get started, just want to say thank you so much to everyone out there who's been watching my videos. Thank you. If you can maybe give this video a thumbs up or possibly leave a comment below or maybe even share this video, it would mean so much to me. But anyway, just thank you so much for just taking time out of your day to check out this video. Thank you. Well, the New York Giants <laughs> wrapped up their three-day mandatory minicamp, if you want to call it that. I was looking, I mean, because there was plenty of articles, you know, for the most part, after, like, day one, what happened, and, you know, and then day two, what happened, and, you know, a couple articles, and, you know, some good stuff there and all. So I'm like, oh, yeah, you know, so, you know, yeah. <laughs> Yes, today was day three, you know, I'm looking for some articles, and I'm looking, uh, what, what happened? What, anything, anything good? Defense win? Dan Jones in there? Saquon? Uh, nothing. <laughs> and finally, he saw, but they had a, I guess, a team meeting, I guess, beforehand or whatever, and then he, and he canceled it, and he held a barbecue. I'm like, oh, that's pretty special. So, there was, you know, so, I mean, I guess, um, He's letting them off. Uh, you, know, they, you know, everybody's got to come back in, in July. I mean, like the veterans, I think it's I think it's July 26th for the veterans. Uh, I guess the rookies and the undrafted free agents and all, whatever. I believe it would be the 19th of July, that week earlier. But I saw a couple articles. So one of them was talking about the, um, the barbecue. <laughs> and the other one was talking about maybe some some uh, differences, um, you know, maybe between like what happened with, you know, the past couple of years with Joe Judge, you know, there as the coach and, you know, the difference between that and uh, Dable, how Dable kind of runs, you know, things. I uh, also talked a little bit about Saquon Barkley, you know, about like the injuries we got. And also, um, it, it, in the article, it mentions that, you know, the, there's quite a few names up there that might be a little bit of a surprise as far as possibly not making the 53-man roster. All right. <laughs> there we go. New York Giants they canceled the final mini camp practice for a barbecue. All right. That's that's not very Bill Parcells-ish. Not very Joe Judge-ish, but who cares? Not very Tom Coughlin-like. That um, probably maybe a little Bell Belichick like. Uh, we had two coaches in the past, um, assistant coaches. One was uh, Vince Lombardi. That's not very Vince Lombardi like. Another guy we had was uh, Tom Landry. That's not very Tom Landry like. But uh, all right, we'll see. According to Art Stapleton, part of the function being put together includes a barbecue at the team facility. So instead of the guys running routes, blocking would-be tacklers, and more during a gruesome practice, a gruesome practice, <laughs> they'll be able to carb up and chow down some delicious food like there's no tomorrow. That sounds like a nice trade-off. Despite the Giants not hitting feel for the final session, it was a positive week for the group. While several stars were rocking red jerseys, quite a few stars, yeah, including Kayvon Thibodeau, Darius, Tony, and more, several studs were able to make some head-turning plays and get the fan base even more excited for week one to arrive. This obviously includes Daniel Jones. Well, wait, well, remains to be seen on that one. The fourth-year signal caller is still in the middle of learning the new offense being implemented by offensive coordinator Mike Kafka, but things have been looking good so far. On top of that, people were excited to see the continued progress of rookie tight end Daniel Bellinger. Cool. Plus second year, uh, second round uh, draft pick Wondell Robinson. I love it. Love it. Robinson is incredible speed, and the fact that he and Jones are already developing some chemistry together is awesome to say. I mean, I mean, it's, you know, I mean, due to the attrition, I mean, our starting wide receivers are all 
all in red jerseys. So you got to have somebody out there. So why not your second round draft pick? And that's good. I mean, take advantage of it. That's, that's really, really good. Him and uh, Wandell are, are hooking up. Awesome. Love it. And, and, and Bellinger, too. Fantastic. Now, though, fans are going to have to wait until late July for the team to get fully back together for camp. So we got like about a month and a half. The rookies are, um, today is the 10th, all right? The rookies are due back, um, I believe it's July 19th. So we got one month and nine days. So we got like 39 days, all right? So, we have, you know, just shy of six weeks. And then basically it'll be just about seven weeks for the, um, for the veterans, right? So, but. Once it starts, guys, once they show up, guys, spring, uh, uh, training camp, preseason games, game number one, and we're off and running once again. Holy cow. I mean, it's, oh, I love it. Love it, guys. It's like Christmas. It's like it's like the beginning of November, and you know Christmas is like six, seven weeks away at the end of December. That's what it is, basically, right? All right, then the Preparation for the regular season will go into overdrive. Soon enough, Jones and company will take on Tennessee Titans in the over. Now that's a that's that's a good. It's it's uh, we got nine home games, eight on the road. So you're getting a tough opponent. It's not the Cowboys, not the Eagles. I I, I get that. I mean, it's always nice to open it up against maybe a rivalry or something like that. It is what it is, but. It's a tough game. You don't have a boatload of tough games. Not saying the Giants are going to the Super Bowl or the playoffs. We're not saying we're going to win the division. But, but, you know, we got a, an easy schedule, all right, for the most part. You know, we only have so many tough games, all right. Um, and this is one of them. On the road against the Titans. This, I mean, it's, it's – I mean, it's just 17 games. It, you know, if you can get all if somehow you pull off a victory here, I mean, that would be fantastic. But, I mean, if you go there and you lose, I mean, I'm not sure. I hope we don't lose. I'm saying if you lose 24 to 21, 23 to 20, something, I mean, something respectable, okay. You know, you tip your hat to the Titans. They're a good team. They're at home, this, that, and the other thing, right? I mean, okay. All right. All right. But before you know, but, I mean, you know, the barbecues are good. I mean, that's that's cool and fun and fancy, all right? And Dable is a player's coach. The players want to run through a wall for him and this, that, and the other thing and all and everything. But, you know, it all boils down to you got to win games. You know what I mean? Uh, you know I mean? You can be a player's coach and coach him up and make him feel golf warm and fuzzy and hold hands and sing kumbaya and stuff like that and everything. That's fantastic. But if you don't win football games <laughs> – Okay, it's the kind of same thing with Judge. He came in here with kind of like an iron fist, if you want to call that. Guys made a mistake, want to lap, this, that, and the other. And that's the way a lot of coaches are. Um, you know, but he didn't win it. he didn't win any game. So right. So if you're coaching style, if you you know, there's there's all different types of coaches out there. And and there's there's no one specific way. This is the way you have to coach, or you're not gonna win any football games. No, there's different ways of coaching. And you can know, you win a Super Bowl, you know, being a different types of coach. But you have to win games. And if you don't win, it doesn't matter how nice you are. It doesn't matter how strict you are. It doesn't matter how much you know about football. If you don't win football games, forget about it, right? So, all right. Final giant takeaways after minicamp. Brian Dable's laid-back culture. Saquon Barkley's role stand out to possible some support. Some surprise cuts. And, I, you know, I looked at the list, and I'm like, geez, we just picked these guys up. I mean, but, you know, it is what it is. I mean, if, you, if you're not that good, and a couple of these guys, you know, on this cut list here are not super spectacular. They, they've, they've been on multiple teams, and there's reason why. Okay. <laughs> Usually there's a reason why. Okay. But anyway, school is out. Summer came early. Coach Brian Day will cancel the team's final minicamp practice on Thursday in favor of organization-wide function. After that, players will break for the summer. Many will go on vacation. Keep an eye on Leonard Williams' Instagram. It's always a treat. And others will return home. Some will stay in New Jersey. Punter Jamie Gillen is taking a trip to see his family in Scotland. Kicker Graham Gano is taking a family trip to Mexico. Good for him. Good, 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 good for him. 
Shirley Day will make another appearance in Madison Square Garden on Thursday night, and they, they lost. So that might be his uh, – I think I think they're up two games to none, and now they're down three games to two, and they'll probably lose to Tampa, and they'll be out of it. So this will be, I'll probably be his last uh, uh, game in Madison Square Garden for this season. So he can, he can you know – he can rest assured maybe he'll, he'll, he'll see the Rangers next season, but he probably won't be there ever, ever again this season. Um, let's see. Well, with no more practices until training camp, Dable first spring as Giants coach, one of his family fairly relaxed and low-intensity fitting and ends early. Here are my final takeaways from everything that happened and everything I heard during OTAs and minicamp this spring. Brian Dable and Joe Judge. It's clear already that Dable and Judge, who wanted to hire Dable as his offensive coordinator, have much different approaches, philosophies, and personalities. That's not a controversial opinion. As a coach, Dable is more laid back, and the practices, at least in the spring, were much more low-key. Judge famously coached with an old-school, hard-nosed mentality. I mean, which is fine. I mean, a lot of top coaches in the past have done that. But you got to win football games. Joe Judge did not win football. He won 10 games in two years. That ain't cutting it. Now it should be noted that Judge didn't even get spring practices before his first season in 2020 due to COVID. So, yeah. Yep. But I'm fairly confident that we won't see a drastic change in Dable's persona between now and training camp. One big noticeable difference in terms of the actual practices, players aren't punished for their mistakes yet, at least not in the same way. In the early days of Judge's tenure, some media, including this reporter, used to track which players were forced to run laps due to making mistakes during drills. Yeah. A penalty, a turnover, anything. It got to a point where some players, like center Nick Gates, would make a mistake and just run a lap without coach tell him. Dable does not coach that way. Occasionally, a backup offensive lineman would get called for a full start and they'd get subbed out. But otherwise, players stayed on the field. So it's a you know it's a little a little different, a little different. All right, what we got here. That's not to say one method is better than the other. I mean, if you win football games, either way, okay, keep it up. But if you don't, you have to win football games. But it clearly changes the mindset of players when they're on the field. One message Dable has repeated throughout the spring, especially as it relates to Daniel Jones, is that he doesn't want players to be afraid to make a mistake. It's not as if Judge never had light practices or never canceled practice to give guys a day off, but the overall vibe of a Dable ran practice is much lighter. Wednesday, the Giants barely conducted any live drills, team drills, yeah. I feel like Coach does a really good job of listening to the players, listening to the staff and understanding we've been grinding. Running back Saquon Barkley said, we've been going since April 4th. Many of the Giants' key players were limited or didn't practice this week due to various ailments, too. Many of them could have practiced, but I'm told that Dable and his staff told them, especially the ones already entrenched in roster spots, to take it easy and focus on getting ready for training camp. That's fine. You know what I mean? That, that, I, mean I mean, you look like maybe Kenny Galladay, maybe Kadarius Tony, you know what I mean? Uh, Andrew Thomas. Take the time off. You guys know how to play football. Take time off. Rest. Get better. Training camp. Let's hit the ground running. The vibe I'm getting is the excitement people are coming into work with, said defensive lineman Leonard Williams. I think guys are happy to be here. They're happy about the teammates and they're ha- that they have next to them. They're happy about the coaches that are coaching them. I think when you're happy about all those things, which is huge, huge, absolutely. It makes it easier to come into work and have a great attitude and great energy. And it shows in practice how we're flying around out there. So that's that's good. Special teams coordinator Thomas McGay said the vibe around the team with Dable leading the way is awesome. McGay said he's a holdover from Pat Shermer and Judge's staff. He, <laughs> he's one of the few. I mean, so that's telling you something about how good he is, okay? It all starts at the top, McGay said. Dave is awesome. He brings a lot of energy every single day. The players feel it. The coaches feel it. I think everybody in the building feels it. Maybe that change in approach will make a difference when the season starts. (laughs) Maybe not. So we're going to have to just wait and see. No leadership council, just open communication. I like this. This this Another big difference from the judge era. Dave won't have a leadership council 
comprised of the team's veteran leaders. That's a common practice among NFL teams, but Dable's approach makes sense too. That clearly has already factored into Dable's thinking with Wednesday's late practice and a cancellation on Thursday. I think it's important to talk to our players, Dable said. I think just because you have experience and a good player doesn't necessarily mean you're a leader. Everybody can be a leader in their own right, doing what you're supposed to do when you're supposed to do it on a consistent basis. That's the first step to being a good leader. We've got a lot of guys that I think fit that mold. How it pans out when we vote for captains, which will be a vote for the players, it's their team. Then we got the Saquon Barkley intrigue. Barkley looked like the Giants' best and most important non-quarterback for much of OTAs. Though, take that with a grain of salt considering it's been non-contact, but he remains probably the most fascinating figure on the teams heading into the season. In terms of the on-field aspect, the biggest takeaway in the spring is how Dable and offensive coordinator Mike Kafka plan to use Barkley on offense. We've already written about it extensively, but he was lining up as a receiver, both in the slot and outside, frequently throughout the drills, and moved around a lot in pre-snap motion. He was heavily targeted, though. That doesn't necessarily matter in the, in the setting. So, but there was numerous occasions where Barkley would be lined up as a receiver and someone else, like backup running back Mike Br- Matt Breida, or a receiver would take his place in the backfield. How cool is that? He has never been used like this in the NFL before. Say that. I mean, that's what, you know, you got, you got between Dable and Kafka, right? Got to love it. Well, off the field, Barkley said something interesting on Wednesday that he had previously. He admitted that he lost some confidence the last couple of years as he tried to work his way back from various injuries. Barkley missed all but two games in 2020 with the torn ACL and had an ankle injury that bothered him most of the 2021 season. Yeah. He only finished last season with 593 rushing yards and four touchdowns in 13 games. I mean, whew, just goes to show you what kind of unbelievable season it was all, all around. I was a way more confident player in college and early in my career than I was prior to last year and then and then the other year, those two two years. Barkley said, now I'm starting to get that back, starting to get that swagger back. You can't get too high on it because it's just minicamp right now. But all the little stuff and gaining confidence here in this break that we have, hopefully catapults and pushes me through camp into the regular season and beyond, hopefully. This might be the last season in the Giants uniform, which is true. It's difficult to envision Joe Shane paying him big money on a second contract. I mean, I, I just... It's going to be tough. He's going to want 13 to 17 million. Maybe, I don't know, maybe more. I mean, that's that's a lot of money, you know. So, let's see. Even if he has a great, paying him a big contract, even if he has a great year. I mean, you know. So, Barkley returning to his rookie form would be a major boom for a rebuilding offense. But, I mean, you know, it's big for. Uh, it's huge for him because he's going to want to get paid. I don't blame him. But if it's not by the Giants, you know, by me with somebody else. So he's going to want to, you know, see if he can bounce back and have himself a really, really good year. If this was any other team, one could say it's only minicamp, so the number of guys sitting out in the practice doesn't really matter. And yes, as mentioned, many of these players probably could have practiced, but more, but the coaching staff held them out. But the Giants have not earned the benefit of the doubt when it comes to durability issues, especially a wide receiver. Oh, my goodness. Kadarius, Tony, Kenny Galladay, and Sterling Shepard were all limited or out the entire spring. Shepard, with his Achilles, was expected. Yeah. Tony had a new knee injury. That he had six injuries last year. Knee wasn't one of them. So this is a new one. Two things with COVID last year. Problem with his cleats. Six different injuries last year. And now this is a, a seventh injury. Holy cow. And he, but he's, he, was, he was catching balls from the jugs machine. Galladay, a known injury, <laughs> participated in some individual drills during minicamp and seemed to be moving okay. Thank goodness. But we saw what happened last year when Daniel Jones barely got any reps with his top receivers during training camp. 
When the season started, he didn't really have a connection with any of them other than Shepard, who has been here for his whole career. Here's to hoping Tony and or Galladay heal up and are good to go for most or all of training camp and into the season without hiccups. Let's hope, right? Their absences were a boon for rookie Wondell Robinson. Absolutely. He got plenty of reps with Jones. That's good. That's really, really good because by default, he's going to be in there um, because there's, there's no way those three guys are staying healthy throughout the whole season. No way. I mean, and then you figure Sterling Shepard's not even going to be ready for, probably ain't going to be ready for the start of the season. So that's what, insert Wondell Robinson, right? Love it. Love it. Okay. As for other injured players, both cornerbacks at Aaron Robinson, unknown injury, and Darnay Holmes' foot are dealing with minor ailments and should be fine for training camp or source. Left tackle Andrew Thomas' ankle still moving around gingerly, but has participated in some drills after off-season surgery. The seven weeks off should help. That's good. Outside linebacker Kayvon Thibodeau, unknown, was limited in minicamp out of an Abundance of caution. He should be okay for training camp. Linebacker Blake Martinez is still working his way back from ACL surgery. I would expect him to be limited to start a training camp. That's fine. You know what the guy can do. And even if he doesn't play preseason or not like that, you, even, you might be a little rusty or something, but you know what the guy can do. So take your time, Blake. Guard center Nick Gates and tackle Matt Parrott and Nay are still a long way off. Pair is closer to return than Gates is, if Gates ever can return, who might not ever might even play at all this year, which is a possibility. But Parrot also might be fighting for a roster spot. Yeah, that's that's possible. <laughs> that's a that's that's a possibility. All right, now we got secondary situation. The Giants secondary is going through. Some growing pains this season, but going all in on seeing what they have with some young players might not be the worst thing. James Bradbury and Logan Ryan are gone. My early prediction for the Giants secondary the initial 53-man roster, barring any more off-season additions based on some conversations I've had. Outside corner, you got Dory Jackson, Aaron Robinson, Rodarius Williams, and Michael Jaquette. Nickel, you got Darnay Holmes, and you don't forget about Cordell Fly. Don't forget about him. Uh, we got safeties, Xavier McKinney, Julian Love, Dane Belt, and Jared Williams. The locks, I think, are, are yeah, obviously, Dory Jackson, yeah. Aaron Robinson, Holmes, Flott, McKinney, Love, and Belt. Yeah, I mean, just don't forget, I mean, if, if they got drafted, you know, there's a real, I mean, I'm not going to say there's a, there's a stone cold block, absolutely, positively, you know, to make the team, but if they, if they um, you know, Spent a draft pick on you. You got a real good chance of making a team. Jaquette was one of the biggest surprises of minicamp and was getting first team reps with Robinson out. But Darius Williams is still injured and needs to show that he can contribute on special teams. Jaron Williams played well last year and his cornerback safety versatility, which is huge. Don't be surprised if Belton eventually usurps Love's starting job. And then that might be it for Love. This might be his last season. They'll little off and be on the field at the same time anyway, since both have the versatility to line up in multiple spots. I thought that Flott being drafted in the third round might have meant the Giants had soured at Holmes, but I'm told this coaching staff is still high on Holmes, which is great, but, you know, he's not a Shane or Dable guy. They didn't draft him, so got to keep an eye on that. Flott still needs to bulk up and is probably the long-term solution at nickel, but Holmes is the early favorite to start. Holmes was starting to come into his own last season before he suffered a season-ending rib injury against the Eagles. Yeah, he, he uh, I think that was his interception. I think he had. That was his final play. Yeah, and you could tell when he came out. He got up. He got up from that. He was he was in pain. He was definitely in some pain at the end of at the, oh, there is, at the end of the interception. Yeah, he had, picked it off. And he, he went down. He but he came up. He was in some pain. You can definitely tell. Prior to that, at the trade deadline, the Eagles were calling around the league trying to acquire help at cornerback. They spoke with the Giants about Holmes, but the Giants weren't interested. A person familiar with those conversations told NJ Advanced Media. The Eagles wound up trading a six-round pick to the Broncos for cornerback Kerry Vincent. And then we got some surprise standouts here. 
which is cool. Some under the radar players that caught my eye besides Jaquette. Ellison Smith, fourth round pick from last year. He was making an impact both against the starting offensive line and the backups, consistently creating pressure. Wink Martindale was creative in the way he was used to, even plugging him on the inside and at middle linebacker. He's an athletic, toolsy ball of clay for Martindale and outside linebacker coach Drew Wilkins to mold. Wide receiver Travis Toivonen. He was getting reps with both the first and second team offense with so many receivers out and took advantage of those opportunities. He has good size, six foot four, nice size. And he feels like the most likely candidate to become a classic training camp fan favorite. Sounds good to me. Zion Gilbert, quarter cornerback. The undrafted rookie from FAU made some plays running mostly with the second or third team defense groups. He nearly had an interception on Wednesday. Alpha, Nico Lalo, South, uh, outside linebacker. He had a pick six off Daniel Jones in one OTA practice, and his ability to help as an emergency snapper on special teams can't hurt. A perfect practice squad player. Yes, he is. And tight end Austin Allen. He didn't make any big plays necessarily, but by the end of minicamp, the undrafted rookie was getting as many first-team reps as Ricky Seals-Jones. And I said, as you're going you're gonna to see Ricky Seals-Jones' name come up one more time in this article. And yeah, I can't I can't really be surprised about that. But all right. Whoops. Every year there are players that sign as free agents or that were drafted fairly recently that wind up getting cut when rosters are trimmed to 53 players. A few players that might be more on the bubble than originally anticipated. Darius Slayton. This is a possibility anyway, considering the moves the Giants made this offseason. But Slayton rarely worked with the first-team offense during live drills and generally struggled to catch passes. The lack of reps with the stars is especially eye-opening with how many actual starters, three of them, were out. If the Giants cut or trade Slayton, they'll save $2.5 million, which is huge. There we go. Tight end Ricky Seals-Jones. When he signed, he was penciled in as the starting tight end. <laughs> well, so much for that. But that was before the draft. Now rookie Daniel Bellinger seems locked in as the starter. Undrafted rookie Austin Allen is making a push, and veteran Jordan Akins has passed ties with tight end coach Andy Bischoff. Okay, so yeah, Andy Bischoff, he, he's good. He, he knows his stuff. Seals Jones, meanwhile, was often running with the third stringer, so that's not good. And there's a reason why Ricky Seals Jones has been on so many different teams. I think it's like as if – this is, I think the Giants may be like his fifth team in six years or something like that. I mean, there's a reason why. Guard Max Garcia, he's a veteran. 52 career starts and was viewed as a contender to start, but that's not really the case. Shane Lemieux feels locked in at left guard with rookie Joshua Zudu right behind him. Garcia has gotten some reps as a backup center, but he'll be battling it out for a roster spot in training camp. So... Yeah, you know, we brought him in, but that doesn't necessarily mean, you know, you know, they're gonna be uh, you know, they're they locked in this one not gonna know. He was signed as a possible swing tackle option in March and still might take on a role like that. But when Andrew Thomas sat out team drills, even only Azudu and Corey Cunningham filled in a left tackle. Not gonna know. So now, plus Matt Parrott will return eventually to push for a backup job spot too. So I mean, yeah, so, I mean we got a lot of guys. I mean, obviously you brought in so many guys. We drafted some guys and this, that, and the other. I mean, everybody can't obviously can't make the team and everybody obviously can't make the practice squad either. So just because we, you know, we signed some of these guys and brought them in and all and everything, you know, uh, you know the you know, the just depth pieces, you know. But I mean you gotta look at it, you know, period. You know, if you bring a guy in, okay, eh, and, you know, say he's been in the league for five years. And this is his, like his fourth team in five. There's a reason why. I mean, it doesn't mean he can't play football. No, of course it doesn't mean he can't play football. But, I mean, can they play it maybe at a real high level? You know, mm -hmm. chances are probably not. You know what I mean? So even if we did, even if like uh, Garcia, Rick Seal Jones, Gano, or whatever, you know, um, Gano, um, you know, they, they, they make the team, you know, there's a good chance they'll be here this year 
and they'll <laughs> this will be the only year they're here. So you see, I mean, that's all fine and fancy, you know. I mean, I, I, I you know, that's you know, that's cool. Dable's, you know, he, he's a he's a player's coach, okay, you know. Which is, you know, which, which is it's fine. Okay, you know, um, you know, we also need to look back at some other guys, you know, like uh, Mr. Knoll, right? The uh, coach of the, the Steelers who won four Super Bowls in the 70s. He wasn't a player's coach. A uh, guy, eh, somebody like maybe Vince Lombardi. They appreciated him afterwards, but... I mean, he was a player's coach, but he's not, you know... Stop and practice to hold the barbecue, I can tell you that much. You know what I mean? So, uh, you know, these guys, you know, willing to run maybe through a wall for Brian Dable because, you know, the ninth atmosphere, easy going, and, and if the guys make a mistake, they don't have to run a lap and all that and everything. So, you know what I mean? So that's, so that's all fine and fancy. But what it all boils down to, okay, you got to win football games. Now, Joe Judge, if a guy made a mistake, Joe Judge having him run a lap. You know, Joe Judge this, Joe Judge, you know what I mean? You know, he's, you know, he's you know, a little a little more intense, shall we say. But you know what? If you won football games, that's the way to do it. <laughs> okay? Um, and it, it doesn't matter. If you don't win football games, you know, whatever you did, it, it's wrong. Right? I mean, Nick Saban, I mean, uh, uh, you know, from, um, uh, the, from Alabama, okay? He's not canceling practices as the whole barbecues. I mean, he's not running around joking around and this, that, and the other. You know what I mean? I mean, he's all business. And what, what's he do every year? He's in the championship game. I mean, I win the championship game, but it seems like every year, at least every year, he's in the, the final four. Every year, right? So, you know, so I mean, being a player's coach is cool. But what it all, all boils down to, you got to win football games. And if you don't win football games, it doesn't matter how cool you are or how many barbecues you hold. You're going to be out of a job real fast. Well, as always, guys, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for taking time out of your day to check out this video. You guys stay safe out there. Go Giants! Woo!